Imagine, you've just received a cancer diagnosis. Devastating. However, the good news is that we have drugs here at the James Cancer Hospital that can be used to treat this cancer. The bad news, these drugs are only available intravenously, IV, which requires hours of infusion therapy here at the hospital. And let's imagine that rather than being a resident of Columbus, Ohio, you're a resident of Nelsonville, Ohio. Now, not only do you have the stress and anxiety associated with a cancer diagnosis, but you have an hour commute to Columbus where you'll receive several hours of therapy followed by an hour commute home. This would understandably be horrible and probably get in the way of other responsibilities like childcare needs or the ability to work. If you were an oncologist treating these patients, this would be heartbreaking. Perhaps you'd want to try to give these IV drugs orally. Let's take a drug, for example, decitabine, and see what happens if we try to administer this IV drug orally. By this graph, we can see the concentrations of the decitabine when given orally are very low. This would result in ineffective therapy for a patient. And the reason we can't administer decitabine orally, similar to many other IV anti-cancer drugs, is because of drug metabolism. And while I'm sure we're all familiar with the idea of drug metabolism to some extent, let's use an analogy to make sure we're all on the same page of what we're trying to do today. And the analogy we'll use is that of a road. And the road here represents the human body. And on this road, we have several cars. And the, these cars represent the drug that we've administered to the patient. And these cars want to get to a destination. The destination representing uh, the drug target in our body. And blocking the way of these cars to their destination is a toll booth. And this toll booth represents drug metabolism. It's only going to let a certain amount of drug to its target. When a drug is given to a patient, on an average, this toll booth is only going to let a certain number of cars through. However, and the crux of today's talk, is that everyone's toll booth looks a little different. Drug metabolism works a little differently between each patient. So what happens if your toll booth is a little bit more relaxed? It lets more cars through. Well, more cars are going to get to their destination. You're going to have more drug at your target. And this could potentially result in things like adverse effects or toxicity. Conversely, imagine your toll booth is a little too restrictive and doesn't let many cars through. Well, this is going to prevent your cars from getting to their destination and prevent your drug from getting to its target. This is similar to the example we saw with decitabine earlier. What if we could remove the toll booth, inhibit drug metabolism? Well, if we gave the same amount of drug, if we had the same amount of cars, you'd have too many cars getting to the destination, too much drug at your target, and again, this could result in toxicity. However, if we decrease the amount of cars on the road, if we decrease the amount of drug we're giving, if we remove the toll booth, inhibit drug metabolism, the ideal amount of drug gets to its target each time. And that's the idea of today's talk. Let's go back to our decitamine example. Again, if we try to administer decitabine orally, concentrations are too low for effective therapy. However, if we give decitabine with an inhibitor of its metabolism, THU, we have much higher concentrations of drug. Similarly, if we give oral decitabine with an inhibitor of its metabolism and compare drug levels versus IV decitabine, we see they're quite similar, suggesting we could effectively treat patients with oral decitabine when we inhibit drug metabolism. And this resulted in the commercial approval of a formulation like this recently. And this idea has been pursued for over 40 years to convert IV anti-cancer drugs to oral formulations. I'm actually a pharmacist, and I found this idea quite exciting, that we could use drug-drug interactions beneficially rather than just avoiding them. So for my project, we tried to apply this idea to oral anti-cancer drugs and improve these drugs by inhibiting their metabolism. To get an idea of what this might look like, let's take a step back and look at the relationship between bioavailability and variability. So bioavailability is the amount of drug that makes it to the target, basically the amount of cars that make it through the toll booth. And variability is how, how different this drug acts between different patients. And each of these dots represents a different drug. And as we can see, drugs with higher bioavailability have lower variability. And we thought if we could increase the bioavailability of a drug, we could potentially decrease its variability. For this project, we chose the drug abrutinib, a highly effective anti-cancer drug 
that the James Cancer Hospital actually played a role in the development of. And important for our purpose today is that this drug has highly variable drug levels with an overlap in exposure across a three-fold dose increase. So we wanted to decrease this variability by increasing bioavailability. To test this, we studied abrutinib alone or in combination with cobezistat, an inhibitor of abrutinib's metabolism. We administered abrutinib alone or abrutinib with cobezistat and looked at concentrations of abrutinib. And what we found is the concentrations of abrutinib were greatly increased when given with cobezistat, suggesting that we increased abrutinib's bioavailability. To build upon this, we attempted to administer a low dose of abrutinib with cobezistat versus a higher dose of abrutinib that's previously been effective to treat cancer. In this study, we showed that we were able to administer a nine-fold dose decrease of abrutinib with cobezistat and achieve similar drug levels to those that have been effective to treat cancer. These data are very promising and suggest that we're able to increase abrutinib's bioavailability by inhibiting its metabolism with cobezistat. Future clinical trials will be directed at determining if by increasing this bioavailability, we decrease abrutinib's variability between different patients. Together, we've seen that there are potential benefits of inhibiting drug metabolism, including the ability to give IV drugs as oral pills, and the ability to decrease variability between different patients, which could result in fewer patients experiencing adverse effects. And if we're administering significantly less drug, up to a nine-fold dose decrease, we could potentially decrease cost for patients, which could be very significant for drugs like abrutinib that cost patients over $100,000 per year. These benefits could improve the lives of our patients, whether they're patients here in Columbus, Ohio, by having them experience less adverse effects, or our hypothetical patient in Nelsonville, Ohio, who could spend less time commuting and more time doing the things they enjoy with the people they love. Thank you.